plays down here in Tennessee. We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Welcome once again to Titans Tube, everybody. My name is Justin, and this is Jake with me here. And uh, Jake, it's it is the day before Thanksgiving, and we have yet to talk about the Packers game uh, last Thursday night. It's almost been a full week, so so uh, a, a lot to unpack here in this mm-hmm. episode. But uh, it's been a busy week, Jake. Uh, a busy uh, trip for you on Thursday night, I believe. Yes. Jake, how how was it? How was the experience wow. at Lambeau Field? First of all, uh, also yeah, recap. Titans win 27 to 17 should say that at the top uh, as everyone knows by now uh seven and three on the season so get to the game in a minute but Jake what a what a once in a lifetime football experience you must have had there man that that 27 to 17 victory Justin was just the cherry on top of the Lambo yeah. experience if I'm being honest and you know uh a, a good friend of mine is a Packers fan I probably mentioned that in the the, the tiny preview we did but uh, so we've been building up to this trip for the better part of our entire friendship, which has been, you know, over a decade at this point. So there's been 10 years of hype going into this trip. And it's one of the first times in my life, Justin, where there's been that much hype leading up to something and it delivered. Lambo, I couldn't recommend it more to any NFL fan looking to make the pilgrimage because it's just, I don't know, there's just a different air up there. And also there's a different air up there in terms of, it just feels like the air is colder. Like we had the same temperatures as we like did in Ohio, kind of. Uh, it was a little bit colder, obviously, up north. But when you got out of the car, man, it was just the wind just felt the wind in the air just felt colder up there. And so it, it, it definitely lived up to its frozen tundra name. Got some snow yeah. flurries in that first quarter, Justin. It was just perfect. Big it was you couldn't have asked for a better atmosphere, better experience. Uh, you know, everybody in Wisconsin was was really, really, really great. Uh, super, super nice people up there, and they are faithful to the Packers. Let me tell you, Justin, it <laughs> is bet. very uh, college football esque atmosphere for an NFL game up there, which is just it's it's amazing. I can't say enough great things about uh, the you know the city of Green Bay, the the community around the team. It's just it's really unique for the NFL, and it's amazing that it's yeah. still going on up there in Green Bay. Yeah, all the history and lore and all that. Vince Lombardi. Barley, Curly Lambo, mm-hmm. Vince Lombardi. Mm-hmm. Lombardi. I'll try to combine them. Yeah, dude, I got to make a trip. I mean, what a what a time to go to. It's a good thing y'all didn't plan this trip two years ago when we went up there mm-hmm. on a Thursday night and got our butts beaten in a terrible way. Um, but yeah, and you got to see the Titans. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to go to Lambo anyway, but to watch your team, the Titans play, and to have Derrick Henry and to be riding a, a pretty good streak right now. I think that, what is it, seven out of our last eight games, mm-hmm. Titans have won the football game. Um, so in front of a national uh, audience, too, I, I think, you know, this is that, that signature win that kind of puts us on the map. Because, hey, we uh, <laughs> I mean, we scored 27 points, Jake, season high. I mean, we are, we are just shooting off fireworks up here. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. That, so, so looking good and uh, playing it, you know, I know they're having a down season so far, but a premier, uh, you know, opponent, uh, one of the faces of the league, Aaron Rodgers, you know, everybody's got all the eyeballs in and you go out and have a dominating performance uh, really on both sides of the ball. Um, so yeah, what a great game. What a great win. And dude, you got to see it in person. I am so jealous, but I, I've, I've got to make a trip up there eventually. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was crazy, man. And, and just the, the atmosphere, it was unbelievable. It was the first time I've ever been in an NFL stadium where 20 to 30 minutes before kickoff, before the national anthem even happens, that place is packed. That place is full. Every seat is being taken up 20, 30 minutes before kickoff. I've never seen anything like it for a professional sporting event. You know, you see it in college and you see the hype build up. But this was the, you know, the Titans, a small market team coming in, you know, interconference matchup on a Thursday night, but man, it, it was, it was absolutely electric underneath, uh, under the lights at Lambo. So, uh, yeah, incredible, you don't, you don't incredible experience. 
if, if, this, if this game were in Nashville and the records were flipped and, you know, the Titans were four and six, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, the Packers would draw a crowd anyway. But, yeah, dude, Nashville, the stadium wouldn't get fuller until, like, mm -hmm. halfway through the first quarter of the game. So, uh, yeah, got, got to respect the fan base and, and all that and, and, you know, the whole atmosphere at Lambeau. Absolutely. But but how about the game the Titans right. played, Justin? Yeah. We'll hop yeah. right in. They go right down on that first possession. I thought they were going to go three and out for sure. Oh, boy. Third and, you know, seven or eight. And they throw the ball deep downfield to Traylon Burks, Justin. It was a sign of things to come. It was the most beautiful throw and pass we've seen this season, potentially, save yeah. for the one later in the game uh, where when it was already in hand. But, yeah. but Traylon Burke's coming out party couldn't have picked a better spot for him and couldn't have loved it any more seeing this aerial attack, Justin. Do we yeah. have a, a little bit of a passing offense <laughs> here? Are we turning a corner, do you think? It, it's Well, man, that's a weird effect on my piece of paper. It's my first note, Jake, is the big takeaway from this game is that we have an exist – a passing game exists somewhere <laughs> within this team. They finally found it. Uh, Burks, you know, being on the field does help. I mean, we, we've, we've talked about it the past few weeks. You know, his numbers don't pop off the stat sheet, but you still really like what you're seeing on the field when he does have the ball in his hands, even just like a ball thrown his way, uh, him running a route. I mean, he looks good. He looks the part. We want to mm -hmm. see him, you know, uh, get more involved. And, you know, the Titans did that early with the big pass and then the Henry kind of push forward pass to him, mm -hmm. uh, getting the ball in his hand, getting him comfortable into the game. Uh, dude, and yeah, and that just kind of elevates everything else. And of course, Tannehill having the best game of the season absolutely helped everything as well. But uh, yeah, dude, it, the, the efficiency was crazy. You look at the targets for all of the pass catchers versus the times they caught the ball. I think there were maybe like two misses uh, from Tannehill to the receivers. And then the, it was either a throwaway or a couple throwaways, but he had four or five incompletions. Tannehill was money. Uh, again, Austin Hooper providing a huge spark for us at the tight end position and Robert Woods, you know, thank goodness he had a bounce back game. I mean, he was, he, he had been struggling the past couple games here, uh, but man, yeah, it's so vital when everything's starting to click. And I think Traylon Burks can be a big part of that moving forward. Uh, but yeah, big, big shout out to Tanny as well. Like literally like perfect game, except for the little interception. He just, Oh, oh it, it looked bad. Everyone was, it was bad. Everyone, am I wrong? Everyone was complimenting how the uh, DB played that, you know, kind of peeling back mm -hmm. or whatever, tracking, tracking the route, you know, or whatever. But I, it looked like another player behind him could have intercepted the pass. I yeah. mean, he was kind of squeezing into triple coverage anyway. Seeing I mean, it, yeah, seeing it live and then even on the replay, it's a one man route, Justin. I even I, I said it watching yep. it in the stadium. I, there's one person running a route on this entire pass play. So where is he going to go? Yeah, he's going to force it into the literal one guy running down the field, Traylon Burks. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll give him credit for targeting Traylon. You know, we've been clamoring for more targets. But yeah. one man route, this was the stuff that drove me nuts about the Malarkey and Robisky offense. It, yeah. The two man routes, the one man routes. I mean, what are we doing here? You know, that we're throwing it in literally quadruple coverage because there's four defensive backs and one receiver out yeah. on a route. A little, a little bit just, silly. I know, and it's it's just something to criticize, too, because you still want to see this team be able to close out a game kind of comfortably, mm -hmm. like just put them away, you know, midway, uh, late to midway into the fourth quarter. Uh, but they always allow teams to, you know, kind of hang around still. And, you know, that interception kind of delayed the inevitable, but the mm -hmm. Titans were still able to put the clamps on them because the defense again, Jake, showed up uh, in a big way. Aaron Rodgers missed a couple throws, bad throws from Aaron Rodgers. That's putting it nicely, ooh-wee. <laughs> yeah <laughs> missed him um but so so that helped I mean th this Packers team could have very much been more in this game if they had gotten some of those big conversions but I I don't know what what Rodgers was doing back there if he just wasn't you know the ball wasn't coming out of his hand as as well whatever I don't know but we'll take it we'll take the yes. best rows uh, uh you know uh still the overall this defense dude again um undermanned uh, hopefully we're going to get healthier after this long break between games uh but again dude we're we're getting after him and they have that kind of that bend but don't break we're giving up some plays you know the Packers had a big touchdown drive in the second half but uh right after that I mean I think we shut him out completely in the fourth quarter so um or I don't know I might have to check that again but anyway uh great 
great de- defensive game again from the Titans. Definitely. It's unbelievable. You know, in this eight-game stretch, um, you know, they gave up 20 to the Chiefs in the one loss. And then the seven other wins, they've given up 17 or less, Justin. This defense is yeah. playing out of its mind right now. And, uh, yeah, there you go. 17 or less. And then the exception was, oh, we gave up 20 in overtime. So oh, it, it's right. unbelievable what, what Shane Bowen and Mike Vrabel has done with this group on defense. And it's with, you know, it is with – they're the more injured side of the ball, finally. It, it, I don't want to say finally, but it's, <laughs> finally, it's, it's about, about like the offense – <laughs> has carried the brunt of all the injuries over the past two, three seasons. And we've had a relatively healthy defense, but now it feels like the roles are reversed and the defense is beat up, but still they're getting the most out of this defensive performance uh, through and through every week in this stretch. And and you love to see it from the Titans. I did want to bring back up the pass catchers, Justin, on, on the offensive side of the ball. And I just want to read the stats, and it's it, it's just exactly encapsulates what this Titans offense can be, because Derrick Henry was somewhat pedestrian. I was I was surprised leaving the game to find out he had 87 yards rushing. It felt like he couldn't get much going, but uh, yeah. was able to leak a few longer runs in that fourth quarter. But but it was tough sledding for the run game. They definitely didn't carry him in that aspect. But anyways, uh, this is exactly what you want your receiving production to look like coming into this season. Traylon Burke, seven catches, 111 yards. Perfect. We got to get him that first touchdown. We got to get him that touchdown. He wanted it bad on that go route at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, seven for 111, Traylon Burks. Love to see that as as our number one wide receiver. Number two, Robert Woods, six catches, 69 yards. Derrick Henry, two catches, 45 yards. Love that. Austin Hooper, talk about efficiency, man. Four catches, 36 yards, two touchdowns. Ooh, and then we have yes. the big splash play to Chigakonkwo uh, for 31 yards on a spectacular hey. grab. Yeah. Nick Westbrook, two catches, two first downs from him for 30 yards. Uh, Dontrell Hilliard, one catch, 14 yards, touchdown. Jeff Swain, yes. we only threw him the ball once. That's what we want to see. He has three <laughs> yeah. yards on the game. But, so, yeah. but listen to that. That was yeah. spreading the ball all around this offense in the correct – uh, uh, proportions in the correct portions of each person, Definitely. what they should be contributing to this offense. And it was just a sight for sore eyes, Justin. I, I couldn't get over what I was watching in front of my very own two eyes. Ryan Tannehill was surgical out there and Aaron Rodgers is out here missing throw after throw under the lights at Lambeau. Yeah. I mean, it was, was, it was almost mind boggling. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was crazy. And, and kind of uh, going back to what you said about the run game. Yeah, it was, it was, a tough going getting yards I think Henry had 28 carries for 87 so he was getting bits you know here and there but what that does is it makes the play action that much more effective because mm-hmm. you're handing the ball off to Derrick Henry almost 30 times a game you're going to be biting on that play action more times than not so Tannehill is such a good play action passer as well so that opens opens things up uh, you know just, just Henry and I thought this was still a good game from Henry you know he had the big mm-hmm. reception that kind of Helps the overall feel that he had a great game. And, of course, the jump pass touchdown. Love uh, it. Just kind of doing it all for this team. And just his mere presence on the field is is a difference maker. I mean, he, he was still one of the most important players, you know, for us on, on the field, even though he was bit, barely getting, what, three yards a carry on the ground. Mm-hmm. But uh, so he, he still found a way to be hugely impactful for us in this game. So perfect just complimentary offense. I mean, this was that – that pretty beautiful win you know it's only a 10 point win this was a three point game in the second half but just where everything's you know was clicking and, and came together I mean yeah we saw some some stone house punts but like three or four uh so you're not going to score every time you get the ball but but still uh it's still a good overall performance offense Absolutely. defense, rushing passing um the run defense and the pass defense was good but the run defense Jake I mean how many yards did we give up on the ground? Less than 60, I think, between Aaron Jones and A.J. A. Dillon. Um, so just continuing was, to make yeah. offenses one-dimensional. So Absolutely. And it was huge to bottle like up. Football. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's the game we've been waiting on, Justin. You said it. I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, but, yeah, I just wanted to say bottling up um, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones was a huge part of, I think, what made the Packers tick in that Cowboys game a little bit. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers turned it on and looked like vintage Aaron Rodgers at the end. But stopping those two guys as the nucleus of Green Bay's offense right now as they figure out their wide receivers, that was very, very huge for the run defense to show up uh, in the way that it did. 
Uh, un- unbelievable performance from from the Titans, Justin. I just, again, I couldn't know. believe it. It was the most complete game. Oh, and I, I remember the point I wanted to bring up. They, they put up 27, highest scoring total all season long, and they left 10 points on the field, Justin. If you, yeah. you want to get into this, they failed the fourth and inches down, I think, inside the 10. Uh, yeah. So that was a touchdown they left on the board. And then Ryan Tannehill's interception was on the plus side of the field. They were going down to score again. And uh, so you can argue there's six to 10 points uh, left on the scoreboard for the Titans, yeah. but, but it wasn't going to get that good. You know, we're not going <laughs> to score 30, you know, I mean, pump the uh, brakes. Could you imagine? I mean, Titans fan base would melt down if this team put up 30 points. I mean, Super Bowl hype would, would be at an all time <laughs> high. Um, but I mean, Hey, speaking of, you know, big time hype, you know, way down the road, just for funsies. I mean, the Titans, once again, you know, with the terrible slow start at the beginning of the season, players dropping left and right, you know, Tannehill's missing games. Uh, will Derrick Henry be able to hold up the whole season? Look where we are, Jake, at 7-3, and three, halfway through November, in a very good position among the rest of the playoff field. Uh, no, we don't have the tiebreakers for the Chief, versus the Chiefs and Bills, but you know what? I, I would love another crack at the Chiefs with a healthy Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. Um, so, you know, the, the Titans will be chomping at their bits to see them again. Uh, you know, Bills can, is still a very scary team. Uh, we'll see how, you know, for real, can the Dolphins keep up this crazy offensive efficiency there with Tua? I mean, I, this is not a – there's no world beaters here in the AFC still. And the Titans sitting at 7-3 are almost a lock to get a home playoff game with the rest of the division, I think, losing their games. with got another uh, game against the Colts. Colts, uh, so they're a little further in the re- rearview mirror there, but this team is certainly looking at another home playoff game uh, in January uh, with the AFC field that, you know, doesn't particularly scare you in a big way. You know, all these teams seem pretty vulnerable. Uh, shout out Ravens, too. I mean, oh, can you imagine another playoff game against the Ravens? Um, hello, oh, Jake. Boy. Am I getting too far ahead of myself here with all this playoff talk? But, I mean, 10 games in, you're sitting at seven and three. Sometimes it's okay to take a step back, get out of the moment for a second and kind of look around you and see where you're at and, and be excited about it. Absolutely. That's, that was a great little transition, Justin. I, I also was feeling and looking around at playoffs <laughs> and, you know, with the Bengals coming to town, by the way, I don't know if you That's knew, but huge those one. pesky Cincinnati Bengals are coming to town on hmm. Sunday. Um, so I, it got me thinking about, you know, last year's divisional loss to the Bengals and just where that left me as a fan of this football team. Mm -hmm. And it it was, it was really, it broke, it broke a part of my fandom off in a way (laughs) where I was like, brutal, man, something's broken. I I mean, I was, it hurt a lot, Justin. Being from Southwest Ohio, especially hurt. It stung extra that it was the Bengals, you know, (laughs) and it was the one seed. It was everything. The team was healthy, got the bye. Derrick Henry returns. The Super Bowl. Derrick Henry returns. It was the perfect encapsulation. Boom. Kneecap. Three Tannehill interceptions. You're done. And so that's <laughs> it, it. It hurt that much to where it, it kind of broke off a part of my fandom. And I was I was going into this season with a very different point of view of how to approach my fanhood of the Tennessee Titans. And it was going well. It was feeling good. It was feeling you know I I was able to distance myself from this team. But after this win, Justin. I am back in love with the Tennessee Titans, and I've started to let myself get yes. sucked back in with all this playoff you talk fool. and looking you around. Dumb fool. We're all in. They're going to get a home playoff game. The AFC field is like you know, it's it, there's definitely the favorites that maybe you would put above the Titans, but the, you know, this team, the way it scratches and claws. Here I am, you know, waxing poetic about how much I love this team that scratches and claws <laughs> and just finds ugly ways to win. We got a chance. Why not us? You know, and and it sucked me back into that sitting at seven and three, winning the yeah. way that they're winning, uh, showing that complete performance on Thursday night at Lambeau under the snow flurries. Justin, I'm back in love with this team. I'm fully sucked back in. Man. I'm ready to go on a playoff run, get Ooh. a home playoff win because the, you know they only have two since they came to Nashville. It's the Joe yeah. Nendy kick. And the yes. Music City Miracle. So it's about high time we get our Ooh. third home playoff win this year. And, yeah, I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking ahead at that a little bit with the way the AFC South looks. Ooh, man. I loved, loved it, Jake. That There's something that happened to you at Lambeau Field, man. You are, you are bought back <laughs> in. 
I don't know. I don't know if, if your timing could have been better or worse with this, with these same Cincinnati Bengals coming into mm-hmm. town. I mean, if, if you are completely sucked and bought back in, first play of the game, Tannehill throws a pick. Where is that bubble going to burst again? I, I hope not. Hope not. Knock on wood. It's not It'll be just happen. a little, little more off of my fandom, and I'll just be a little less every single year until I <laughs> die, I guess. <laughs> yeah, until, <laughs> until you're that Monty Python skid where he keeps getting his limbs chopped off, and he's like, God. <laughs> And yeah, that, that's going to be you. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I love it. Um, I, I, I feel that I feel the pain, dude. I was down. I was I was avoiding a lot of like off season. Didn't really pay attention to the drafts and stuff. I was just bummed. Didn't want to think about or, or think about the Titans or football in general. Because dude, that that did hurt. Because when you have so much excitement and emotion and the expectation almost, and it doesn't pull through. Speaking of expect expectation. Tennessee, like well, the Vols, look at what the Vols mm-hmm. just did to their fan yep. base. And it's yep. still a great year, way exceeded expectations in general, but but that hope that you have, and then boom, it gets popped unexpectedly, and uh, you're left just wanting to avoid everything in general and, and be sad, a lot of sadness. So we've built ourselves back up, Jake, for this moment, and it's it's time, We and it's time because the Cincinnati Bengals are coming to town, and we can kind of get over that loss a little bit more. I think a, a win against mm. this team here would, would help. I mean, it would it feel good. It, it wouldn't feel bad. It wouldn't it would feel bad. It also wouldn't have the same feeling as hosting an AFC championship game, which is what we would have done, you know, had we not lost that game. But anyway, yeah. we're, we're, it's been what, 10 months, Jake, we gotta, we gotta move on. We gotta move past this. I don't think I ever will, Justin. I, uh, <laughs> that piece of me is forever gone. And I know exactly why. I know exactly yeah. why. <laughs> You'll never January 22nd. 2022 oh oh you know oh 22 2022 interesting and we got 22 back in there there's a lot of 20 it was it was everything it was perfect but you know that's how it goes yeah all right yeah i mean I, i'm excited though too i mean it, it's fun to talk about yes looking forward and seeing where you're at but this is a big game uh, against the Bengals. i mean uh, it would be another afc win if we have any kind of sight set on a on a uh, number one seed or the first round by if any of that's going to fall into place, this team really doesn't have much ground to lose because mm-hmm. they're already uh, really two games back against Kansas city. Cause we don't have the tiebreaker. So um, I don't know, being so far ahead in the division, it doesn't feel like, <laughs> win, but I want it. I want it for the revenge factor against yes. Cincinnati. And, and I mean, you got to win your games obviously. Mm-hmm. And any win is going to help your overall standing and seeding in general. Um, but yeah, anyway, we have, we've had a lot of uh, conjecture and a lot of um, speculation talk here, Jake. Uh, what else? Do, what else do you have to say about Packers? Or we got a Bengals preview coming up. Um, yes, yes, we do. Oh, uh, yeah. So don't want to look too everyone, far ahead in that game. But go don't ahead. Forget, oh, don't forget. Don't forget to, uh, call, to call, call your Uber. Uber. Call your Ubers. Call your Lyfts. Be responsible. Uh, Todd Down and giving us an example of why you, you need to be doing that. Um, yeah. Tough news. We haven't talked about it because we haven't had a video come out since yeah. uh, late sun or late Friday or There's Friday early morning. Friday morning. Yeah. So it happened in Nashville. So I guess they they were just they got too happy about scoring 27 points in the game. We're just throwing down for those 27 yep. points. And uh, man, you hate you hate to see it from from Todd Downing, you know, under a lot of scrutiny this year, a lot of people calling for his job. And then he does this. And that is not helping his case. And he had just called it his best game of the year, too. I, that's, it's it's great. Like, it was a very, this is why we can't have nice things yeah. moment for, for Todd Downing and this coaching staff. I felt like Vrabel was so, uh, you know, I saw the clips after the fact. You know, he's given Derrick Henry the handshake. And yeah. and he's he's just, like, yelling on the sidelines, like, yes. And we, we don't see that a lot out of Mike Vrabel. And he just felt extra jovial going into the mini-buy, going to Lambeau, big test, Thursday yeah. night. And – and he, it felt like Vrabel had this different happy energy about him. Very next morning, Todd Downing arrested for DUI. This is why we can't have nice things. And Vrabel's <laughs> got to get on the Zoom call and and collect deal himself. All the and, and, yeah, yeah. And deal with all the questions and everything. So uh, a tough, tough look for Todd Downing. Uh, from as of you know Wednesday before Thanksgiving, it seems like they're rolling with him. He's going to be coaching on Sunday, and he's going to be coaching probably the rest of the year. Uh, is that the right call? I who am I to decide? Um, but it's it's going to be interesting moving forward, Justin. And it's and yeah, you, you, we said it a little bit before uh, we started filming. But you you mentioned that 
you know, he gave the Titans an out if they were going to go a different direction with this offense. And I don't know if he preemptively saved his job on Thursday night, but yeah. you know, it, it, it's an, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, especially after this season does conclude, hopefully with a Super Bowl title. But when the season does conclude in February, Justin, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Todd Downing uh, moving forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wh- whether you, you think he should be fired or not based on the DUI thing, I mean, maybe from a Titans football perspective, uh, are we prepared in any capacity to have another person call plays for this team? Mm-hmm. I mean, do we have any kind of backup plan? I don't know what's in the cards. I mean, because Vrabel's certainly not a play caller. Um, I mean, I guess who I, – I don't know. I don't know if any team would know that. Like, who would who would have called our plays for Arthur Smith or Matt LaFleur if, if they couldn't mm-hmm. go or, or whatever? But maybe there isn't anybody that really can handle that job right now. And so the times are like, we're gonna, we gotta, we're, we're gonna keep him. We're gonna keep him for now because we kind of don't have a choice. But well, they do. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe it, it would just really be a huge net negative to let Todd down and go mid-season like this. But I don't know. I, I just throwing that thought out there. Uh, just like a, yeah, the offense would be totally like have to be totally re. Mm-hmm. rebuilt not rebuilt or re, uh, redone re-schemed or, yes. or whatever uh, yeah I, yeah and I, I said it I don't think but, it's shocking that yeah. they kept him you know I, I feel like Vrabel's a very you know steady as she goes stick to the business stick to the plan kind of guy and that's the that's the organization they've built with Miss Amy and John Robinson and, and it's it to fire the coach mid-season you know, DUI or not, or poor performance on the field or not, I feel like isn't their bag. I just don't see that coming from this regime. So definitely an interesting thing to keep an eye on, see if he gets suspended from the league, see if he, well, I mean, I guess he's not going to get suspended by the Titans at this juncture. Uh, But um, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. But yes, uh, ending, ending rant. Call call an Uber, call Lyft. It's so easy, especially yeah. if you're Todd Downing. They literally give free rides to all team personnel. Uh, so just just tough tough look and uh, yeah, bad angle for for the organization and, and Todd Downing. Probably. Yeah, I was I was gonna say it could be a really bad look for the Titans right now. It can be critical of them too for not implementing punishment themselves and just kind of letting it go mm-hmm. to the wayside, letting the NFL kind of do their own look into it, but. Yeah. And anyway, I guess we had to had to address that that bummer. Big big mm-hmm. news, you know, surrounding the team. So uh, so we'll see going forward. I mean, it really leaves Downing with little to zero room for error now. Because if we go out and put on a stink show against the Bengals on offense, uh, yeah, it's just going to get that much worse for for Downing. So, mm-hmm. anyways, uh, you got anything I else? Think, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, be on the lookout for the Bengals preview coming a little later this weekend. Everybody have a happy thanksgiving yeah. enjoy time with the fam eat some good food watch some boring football because it's always the cowboys and lions i get that hey. it's tradition but come on guys i i, I will give props to we got lucky with the games though because the, the teams playing are relevant and they're playing yes. well they yes. got winning records yes. giants and cowboys yeah same old same old teams but they're seven and three mm. uh, i think the vikings are playing the D- detroit's have the winning streak now for the first time in like two decades I'm exaggerating, but they're they're winning games again. So hey, we got some possibly good football games. That's true. At least that's good, true. Good teams and relevant teams are are playing. For uh, sure. So I'll so give you that. Is, yeah, I, I'll I'll give you that. But but happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll be back at you with the Bengals preview. And yes, don't forget to tighten up. Seven and three feels great. Justin feels awesome. Feels great. I love it. I love it, Jake. Yes, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see y'all in the preview video. Yeah, tighten up.